adjusting detail. All right, now let's talk about the detail mode. It's designed to help bring back sharpness or definition in the image that was lost during capture. This can happen due to some softening that some digital cameras cause, or maybe the lens wasn't quite focused or the subject was moving slightly. So this will help bring some of that detail back. Whenever you switch to the detail mode, it'll automatically zoom your preview to 100%. It's very important that you work at this 100% or one-to-one -one option. You want to be able to see every pixel in the image when you make adjustments to sharpening. I like to use the navigator to pick a spot in the image that is interesting. A lot of times an eye is a good place to start with, especially for a portrait image. Then go ahead and turn the sharpening on by going to the detail pane and toggling to the on position. You can then use the sharpening slider or just use the left and right arrow keys on your keyboard to increase the amount of sharpness in the scene. Depending on the speed of your computer, there could be a little bit of a lag as you adjust the sharpening slider. I'm going to turn this one way up just for illustration purposes. This is higher than you'd ever actually want to use in your image. Underneath the sharpening slider, there's three options. One labeled Don't Sharpen Shadows, one labeled Don't Sharpen Highlights, and the last one, Don't Sharpen Skin. The Don't Sharpen Shadows toggle prevents the sharpening algorithm from being applied to the shadow tones of the image. With a lot of cameras, there can be noise in the shadows, and if you sharpen the shadow tones, you'll enhance that noise. So most of the time, you're going to leave that Don't Sharpen Shadows option on. There's also a Don't Sharpen Highlights option, which does the same thing but prevents sharpening from the highlights. This is useful if your image came from scanned negative film. In a negative film, the highlights are a lot like the shadows from a digital capture. That's where a lot of that noise can live. So turning on the Don't Sharpen Highlights option is useful to help prevent additional noise in the highlights. This was a digital camera image, so I don't need to use that option. The last option is called Don't Sharpen Skin. And if your image is a portrait and you use the Skin Tune option, this will be enabled. And what it does is it prevents any sharpening from happening within the skin tone colors of the image. Most of the time, you don't want to sharpen skin in your image. It's going to magnify any of the blemishes and the pores in the skin, and it's usually not very flattering for most portrait images. And you can see when I toggled it on, let me turn it off here again, you can see the skin sharpened and the skin not sharpened. It will, however, sharpen the other colors within the image. So if we move down to the teeth, you can see how they still get extra sharpening, as well as the hair. To properly adjust the amount of sharpening, just go ahead and move the slider back and forth. As I mentioned, this is probably pretty high. Most images are only going to need between 50 and 100%. When you adjust the sharpening, you just want to make sure it still looks real and doesn't get an over-sharpened or magnified edge look. This image, about 75, seems to do a pretty good job. Portrait images will usually require less sharpening than a landscape or general purpose image will.